Welcome to another Gridiron Report. I'm Jared Johnson, and this is a special edition of the Gridiron Report. It's the big picture. And normally it's during a game week in which I'll talk about the big picture. It's from Matt Wells' game week press conference. Now, Texas Tech is not playing this weekend, but Matt Wells met with the media on Wednesday, and boy, there was a lot of information disseminated today during that press conference. Uh, Coach Wells talked about uh, the quarterback position. He talked about, uh, I gave some injury updates, some young guys who played well in kind of a, not a take to the ground scrimmage, but kind of a, you know, team on team. Uh, he's, a, he's a scrimmage type. Uh, earlier today that took place in the Jones, he even touched on some recruiting. So I'm going to try and get to most, if not all of that, as succinctly as possible. So let's dive right in. First off, I think the big news, well, the big news is, Henry Columbia was officially named the starting quarterback. Alan Bowman is now the number two. Bowman started the first four games. He was named the uh, starter throughout <clears throat> all, you know, basically the whole offseason. Struggled mightily against Iowa State. He's not the first quarterback to do so, but I think you know, I, for sure, and several uh, in Raiderland were clamoring for, for Henry Columbia after seeing his performance uh, against Kansas State, and then just a little bit in cleanup, mop-up duty uh, against Iowa State in the fourth quarter last weekend. So, for those who don't know, Henry Columbia is the, the uh, traditional transfer who transferred into the program from Utah State. So, offensive coordinator David Yost and uh, head coach Matt Wells recruited Columbia to their programs twice now. Um, he was granted the waiver, uh, allowing him to play immediately this season. He's a junior. He was a three-star quarterback out of Hollywood, Florida, and he's more of a dual-threat kind of guy. And while he's not a burner, uh, he is definitely a threat to run while Alan Bowman is not. And it's pretty clear, it was very clear, the offense has run uh, more efficiently, been more effective with him uh, as the signal caller as opposed to Alan Bowman. So... He's a starter. He's getting first-team reps this week and next week in preparation of West Virginia coming to town uh, on October 24th. Now, a lot of times you'll see coaches kind of have some gamesmanship and not announce who the starter is going to be, but I think it was smart in terms of for the fan base uh, to let them know that Columbia is, uh, you know, is the starter. He is the guy because, you know, Needless to say, everyone was clamoring for it. it. It appears to be the obvious choice. So now we can move along knowing that um, operating under, you know, with with the knowledge that Columbia is the guy. And so, you know, in my opinion, I have a lot more hope towards that game in the whole season, uh, quite possibly. So uh, Coach Wells was quick to point out that he didn't feel like, you know, it wasn't that Bowman lost the job uh, because he played – poorly but more that Columbia won it so that's where we're at take that for what it's worth uh another big big part of the press conference on wednesday from uh, the information from coach wills was the injury updates and he had a lot here are uh, some guys who are out for the season now if you're on inside the redraiders.com if you're an insider you know uh, a lot of these I've, I've mentioned these but there's a even if you are uh there's uh, you know, there's definitely a possibility that you missed it because there's so many threads, so many topics to talk about. But here it is, right here. Uh, Donovan Smith is out with a shoulder uh, injury. He's a freshman quarterback from Friendship. Uh, he's out for the season. He had surgery. Both he and J.J. Sparkman, also a true fresh freshman, uh, he's a receiver. They both had shoulder surgery, and they're out the rest of the year. And also out for the rest of the year, and this one's really painful, is Nelson Mabansor. Um He was one of the camp standouts. Defensive end, expected a lot, you know a lot was expected from him. Uh, he had bicep repair surgery. He's out for the season, so they're hoping to get all those guys back in the spring. Uh, but that those are tough losses. A couple of other ones. These aren't out for the season. These are more short, short term. But Keyshawn Carter. Now the TV said it was an ankle. I had said it was the elbow, uh, just because he was wearing a, a bulky elbow brace, and then someone confirmed that within the program that he might not play. It wasn't. A, you know, sure that he, for sure he wasn't going to play, but then of course he did not play against Iowa State. Um, actually, Coach Wells uh, confirmed that it was uh, an elbow injury and that progress is actually going pretty slow. They're going to have to see next week how he's progressing and then go from there. Also, at that position, McLean Mannix, um, he has a back injury. I had kind of a setback. They were hoping to have him back last week, but 
uh, you know, he wasn't able to go. So they're they're hoping that he he's able to go against West Virginia, but that's not a for sure thing. And then Dalton Rigdon, also another yet another H receiver, uh, three of the four main ones, uh, is in the concussion protocol. So they are hopeful, but you know, I mean, concussion could be two weeks, it could be two months or a year. You never know with the concussion. So, uh, and that's, I think that's at least the second time he's been in the, and it's probably more than that, but that I know of, he's been in the concussion protocol. So that's something to monitor, man. You can't mess around with those, of course, as we know. So that leaves uh, Miles Price, the true freshman, is the only guy we know who appears to be healthy right now. Like if they played today, that would be healthy at that H receiver position. And he's been very good, but I mean, obviously you'd like to have more depth there. So that's something to monitor. Uh, another guy uh, mentioned is Zach Adams. He had a uh, he has a, a knee injury, but he's coming getting close to coming back, and that's something to monitor. He could, could provide depth, uh, you know, on the offensive line for sure. That uh, senior offensive lineman. Uh, so that, that's going to do it for the for the injuries. Uh, there are some guys. Uh, Coach Wells mentioned that they, you know, like I said, they had kind of the younger uh, scrimmage type. He said now. What he, what he means younger is guys who aren't playing as many snaps, so they could be even up to like juniors, but uh, guys that they want to get you know close to live action. He said they weren't trying to take to the ground, but they were going through um, you know in, in, in mock scrimmaging, um, trying to get these guys some action as close to live action as they could do without getting anybody injured. You know, uh, so I asked him, hey, you know, you mentioned that. Who are some guys who stood out in that today? And he mentioned some guys. I'll, I'll just give you their names and kind of give you a quick background. Cam White is a junior college safety transfer. Uh, he's played a little bit. Uh, I, I like the way he has the look of a power five safety, but we're going to have to see. He needs some more time to develop, some more experience. So these kind of scrimmages are great for him. Taj Brooks, true freshman running back. Hadn't played a whole lot. Played more on special teams at running back. He's a guy I really like. Uh, you know, there's a chance we'll see a lot of him later on in the season, but coach said he looks really good. Caleb Rogers is a guy who's actually played – I don't know how many snaps at left tackle, but he's played some real snaps, um, you know, against live competition when the game was in doubt for you this season. So I, to me, he's close to, to really, he's really challenging for that starting left tackle spot already as a true freshman. And Coach Wells said today, he, you know, he has a very bright future. Landon Peterson, another young offensive lineman. He's kind of listed as the backup at right tackle behind Josh Berger. I don't think he's as close to taking over the starting spot, but I, if Ber something were to happen to, to Berger, I think Peterson... Either Peterson or Rogers would be the guy that go in at right tackle. So uh, he's from Odessa Permian, West Texas guy. So, uh, you know, I've heard nothing but good things about him, and I expect him to play a lot down the line for the Red Raiders. All right, Derek Lewis. Now, I haven't heard much about him at all. So hearing about him today was really good. He's a true freshman running back. Uh, he was a big-time commit. You know, I mean, he chose Texas Tech over Oklahoma State, like the Baylors, that, those kind of schools, TCU. He chose Texas Tech. Complain this in this defense under Coach Patterson. Uh, Coach Will said today he was flying around, uh, looking really good. I expect him to be good down the down the line for Texas Tech as well. Philip Bleedy, another guy. He's playing a lot with Mabanser going down. You need him to play. I was kind of surprised to hear that he was playing in that kind of younger guy's scrimmage, but uh, he's going to be a baller. He's going to be a good, really good player for Texas Tech. They're actually amassing some really good young defensive linemen, so uh, I'm impressed by that. All right, and he said uh, LB Moore. Remember Little Tascosa? He's playing defensive end. He's getting much bigger. I really like him. I like what he's going to bring down the road as well. Like once again, they're amassing some. They're starting to amass some really good defensive linemen, which is a big part of the college football uh, sport, right? Of, of getting it done. So one other thing I want to mention is he said twice that Texas Tech has eight commits. If you notice, we have nine. We have them listed with nine commits. Now, the one guy who. Uh, the reason why we have them listed with nine commits is because we wait until players officially announce. Now, the guy who hasn't officially announced is Deshaun Page, junior college guy. He's a big-time linebacker. He's late, rated as the number one inside linebacker in junior college football. You know, most of y'all who follow recruiting already probably know that this was coming. Uh, it looks like he's going to stay closer in the deep south. He's a, even though he went to a Tennessee high school in Knoxville, he's originally from Mississippi, Mississippi State offered. I think as of right now, I think that's where he's going to end up. He was once committed to Kansas State. He's been committed to Texas Tech. Now it looks like he's going to go to Mississippi State. So that's the latest. That's who I think Coach Wells can't mention guys by name uh, in the press conference. Now. We just got out of the press conference. So that's who I believe uh, it would be is uh, Deshaun Page is the guy who's decommitted. So 
uh, that's where we're at right now. And man, I, that's there's more. Well, I'll have notes posted on Inside the Rib Readers as well. But for now, I want to say thank you for watching, and until next time.